The connection between the engineer and the mechanic is key to on-track success. We'll explore the difference between the engineer and the mechanic on this episode of The Roundtable, presented by Aero Electronics. All right, so the focus today is on the relationship between the engineers and the mechanics. It's obviously a very important part of what we do. We brought the groups together. On my right, I've got uh, five car representatives, and on my left, I've got seven cars. So we've got Kate Gunlack, who's the performance engineer on the five car, um, and the car chief, Chris Nash. On my left, Mike Reggio, performance engineer on the seven, and Gary Frost, the car chief on the seven car. So, just a very basic question. What is the difference between an engineer and a mechanic? I'll start with you and we'll just work our way around the room. <laughs> um, oh my, I gotta say, look, look at these hands. You see these hands? <laughs> look, they've never worked a day in their life. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Not these, those. Yeah, look at Not these. these. Look, there we go, there we go. There's the difference. Yeah. Engineers can be so analytical to a fault and they want to explain the thought process and, and there's too much detail, there's too much chit chat going on with kind of thinking how I think through my head. But Nash is very cut and dry. It's like, I need this by this time. What is it? Thank you very much. We're done. <laughs> like, I don't need the details. Like, we have that, we have a trust. Like, I trust what you're going to say. Don't need to prove it to me. We're the ones dreaming up the ideas, and they're the ones turning our dreams into reality. I've, I've, heard, engineers, <laughs> I've heard engineers referred to as Imagineers. Imagineers. Before, yes. is, that, yes. is that accurate? Yeah, I would say so, yeah. Mike's computer that he's working on isn't going to burn him when he touches it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. The race car is really hot. <laughs> the the work really is hot. <laughs> yeah, we're going we're gonna to go through three sets of brakes this session. Can you just go ahead and pull those off for me? Yeah. Can you just? I hear that yeah, a lot. Can you yeah. just? One thing that's interesting to note, you know, this is for both of you guys. This is your first year as a car chief. How is it different than being a mechanic? There's a ton more information to process. Yeah. Um, as a mechanic, you're basically just making the change. Whereas in this position, there's, you use your brain way more. Sensory overload is overwhelming yeah. sometimes. You know, I've been a mechanic, I've been a crew chief. The, the thing that I always felt like I was, was a filter, right? There's, yeah. from Mike and Kate, you could have a full dissertation on why you're gonna do one thing. The mechanic doesn't necessarily care about that and all you want is an accurate change so you've got to figure out how to take that condense it down into really what matters and get that message out that's that was always uh, you know something that I, I certainly tried to do but it wouldn't, didn't come naturally I should probably apologize to all the other crew chiefs I've worked for <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> after being in this position now heard that a lot too it's another thing if you're not just managing time but you're also managing morale a bit too you know as a crew chief You've, you've, got, you've got information coming from the engineers, you're dealing with your car crew, there's a lot of people involved. How do you handle those, those stressful moments? Be a simple heartbeat, like a metronome almost, just keeping the pace where it needs to be and not racing out of control to try to get things done and just making it happen, being precise. On the other end of being stressful, of like you're stressing to yourself of, okay, we have this, this, and this to get done in this amount of time. Let's just, yeah. it's gonna be okay. It's gonna get done. Gonna okay. <laughs> Try not to stress everyone else out yeah. with your own stress level. No doubt. Yeah. This team has engineers so that we can live on the cutting edge of, of technology and, and ways of working, those types of things. Tech's job is to stop that. How, how do you, how does that work for you? You have to make sure that, that, our, that our, plan, our day plan fits within this tech schedule yep. and that we are still pushing the envelope the most we can because it's such a tight series you can't afford not to yep where i think we push it probably the most is on minimum weight that's always a fine line right we don't want any extra weight on the car can you explain why car weight is so important there's very few ways to make a car go faster and the easiest way is to make it lighter so we're constantly trying yep. to make it as light as possible walk us through a bit of a car setup gary if you could basically we get a setup sheet if we're talking initial setup will um, have just 
assembled the car with all of the proper components um, that the engineers request on the car. Our objective while we're on the setup pad is to uh, put the cambers, toes, ride heights, weights, cross weights, uh, wing angles, all within a couple thousandths of an inch or tenths of a degree, hundredths of a degree from uh, where the engineers have requested yep. us do that. Um, certainly at the Speedway it's very important. We could go up uh, what we call a flatter ride height, right? It's 40 thousandths of an inch, and the car is completely different, right? So it's, it's, man, it's very small margins, isn't it? It is, it is very small, and that's the thing where you send the car, car out, you, there's no fudging the numbers, yeah. right? You're, we send the car out as close to where the engineers want it as we can, yeah. and um, there's never a time when, uh, you look at the number and say, ah, oh, it's good enough, that'll be good enough, because it's not good enough. It's the, they've requested that number for a reason, and it's our job to get the car to where they want it. Sure. Let's talk about what an engineer is today and what tools you have at your disposal. You know, when you, when you guys create a setup sheet along with, along with your race engineers, how do you arrive at those numbers? What, what tools get you there? As far as tools go, we have some tools that are, are developed by available softwares like Excel and MATLAB. Our biggest tool in our toolbox is developed specifically for the data system on this car that works directly with that. It's called Toolbox, yep. and it's what we, we analyze um, most of the data with. So we also develop a lot of our own software in-house. You know, Kate talked about the stuff that, that uh, is, is available for anybody. Let's talk about the stuff that we do our own. So a lot of our tools are developed in Excel, which is a very easy tool, it's very flexible for a lot of the stuff that we do. MATLAB is another layer on top of that. And then with our McLaren partnership now, we actually have software written just for us. But it's all trying to look at really the same thing, but just from a different angle, and maybe you see something that you've missed. So tons of sensors collecting tons of data. Can we go through it all? How do, how do, how do, how do we do that? There's so many forces acting on the car, and especially if we're on a test day where we can run more sensors than we're allowed to on a race weekend, I mean, you'll, there's too much to look at. You can't possibly come up with an answer without these models in the background mm -hmm. for us. By the time the car stops, you pretty much know what you're going to get off the car, and we've already looked at driver stuff as it's happening, and so you can start tackling stuff straight away. Yep. So Gary, we're going to we're going to throw one last question out to the group and we'll start with you. We'll kind of change it up a little bit. What do you love about this? What is it the sport? Is it the team? Is it everything? What 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 gets you out of bed in the morning? Um, trying to win the Indy 500. I'm goosebumps right now talking about <laughs> yep. it. Um, trying to win the Indy 500. That's what it's all about. That's why I get up. That's why I do it. That's main focus. Yep. 100%. Yep. Uh, this beats any real job hands down. Mm -hmm and it's definitely never dull at the racetrack. I can vouch for that. <laughs> you, Chris? Yeah, I like the constant changing, but I also like the instant gratification yeah, type you know that we you have. Yeah, a good we, job right away. Yep. Like, you know if you've done a good job in that weekend. Mm -hmm. well, apart from just the, the science behind it, I love the people that we work with here. This is one of the best groups I've ever been on, and um, winning is really cool. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Nothing beats winning. It is. I, it's, you know, for me, it's the, it's the camaraderie, it's the competition, it's, it's getting up every day and trying to challenge yourself, and I think that all of us, we do a really good job of doing that. Thanks for joining us for another edition of The Roundtable, presented by Aero Electronics.